So there I was, filming myself on the toilet, when all of a sudden I had a thought. Timpani have bowls, and toilets have bowls, so why haven't we made a timpani out of a toilet? Okay, let's see what she sounds like. Whoa. <laughs> that sounds like I'm replacing the audio with a timpani sound. Here's what it really sounds like. It sounds like crap. An interesting thing with the marching tenor drums is they do not and have never had any type of bottom head. It is all open down there. But I say, what if they did have bottom heads? So since these drum shells are cut on an angle, it makes the most sense to me to just attach a second set of drums to the bottom of the original set of drums, you know, cause like Tetris and stuff. This way we will not only have twice the drum depth, but we will also have twice the heads, ooh. And I don't feel like drilling a bunch of holes and stuff into all these drums, so we're just gonna use duct tape and hope for the best. We now have the hybrid Mapex slash Yamaha drums. I guess that would be Mapex. Saha or Yamapex. Oh, I actually like Yamapex. Let's go with that one. So I guess the biggest benefit of these drums is if you fall down and the drums flip over, you can still have a playing surface. Let's get this on a stand and see how it sounds elevated. I guess I'll just try to pick them up like a normal set of drums and hope that they don't fall apart on me. Let's see how sturdy the duct tape job is. Careful, careful, careful. Okay, this is why I go to the gym, so I can lift things that are obnoxiously heavy. Oh my gosh, dude. Okay, so far, so good. All right, let's go. Whoa, oh, dude, that sounds wild. Dude, it literally sounds like octobons, especially the six inch. But here's the real question. Is it marchable? I think it will be. Let's find out. Okay. Ooh. Oh man, that's a bicep curl and a half doing that. I gotta adjust the back bar so they're not saggy. There's nothing worse than saggy drums. Well, I'll say this, these are not the worst drums I've ever worn. The mega tenors suck a lot more than these. Yeah, these are so low, it's like hitting my shins when I do any kind of anything. Da, 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 da. I gotta be careful on that. I need to wear like shin guards, like a soccer player to march these. I gotta say, I thought this was gonna be incredibly stupid and dumb. And I mean, it kind of was stupid and dumb, but at least it's working. And these kind of sound better <laughs> than they did before. The projection is just wild. I don't know how well the audio is getting picked up on the microphone, but to me, playing around top of it, it sounds really loud. <laughs> I gotta take these off without breaking everything. Uh, I don't know how to. <laughs> uh, I guess that works, okay. <laughs> the marching snare drum normally has a plastic head on the snare side and a Kevlar head on the batter side. But what if we beef it up?
For this scientific experiment, I am going to add a second Kevlar head onto the batter side, and that way it will get twice as much girth and also twice as much bulletproofness, uh, I guess. Whoa, that sounds pretty good, actually. Oh man, sounds like I am replacing the audio with a snare drum sound. I keep getting you guys with that. Let's see how it really sounds, though. <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty bad. Kind of impossible to tell from looking at it, but there are two drum heads on this drum. Actually, if we get down here, you can just make out the rings of both of them underneath the bearing edge. Yeah, it feels like playing on like a bottom bass drum. There's just like no rebound at all. And that is because there's a massive air pocket <laughs> in between the, uh, the top top head and the bottom top head. I mean, I'm no physicist, but what I think is happening is the bottom head that is resting properly on the bearing edge of the drum, and then the top head doesn't have a bearing edge. It's just sitting on that other head and just kind of like arching <laughs> over it. Quite a few of you have been asking me to make a tenor set out of cowbells, and I think that that is a very good idea. And in order to make this happen, we will need some help from the Roto Tenors. Not the actual drums on the Roto Tenors, but the back bar for it, because we can clip the cowbells right on to the Roto Tom holders. So we do have a six pack of cowbells here, although the uh, the Spock cowbells, they're mounted to the same pin because this was designed for just five rototoms, but we're making it work. I think the hardest part of playing these is missing the cowbell entirely because there is a, a lot of space in between each of them. I do like how uh, there's like two different timbres, like the rim shot zone is just like the shaft. And then the normal playing zone would be the tip of the stick. It's kind of neat. According to this survey, most of you think that playing triangle with another triangle is dumb, but I completely disagree with that, and I'm gonna prove it. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, honestly. Just for your reference, here's what it sounds like with a normal triangle beater. So I've got a few different triangles here. I think the uh, big massive guy uh, was kind of too clunky sounding. So let's try, let's go down one size. We'll try this triangle on this triangle. Hold on, maybe I need to lighten my touch up on, on this. That actually made a pretty big difference. <laughs> Let me try putting a clip on it. And then we're just gonna swing this one into the other one. It's crash triangles, I love it. That actually sounds kinda good. There's a lot of tones to both these triangles going off. 
Well, I'm gonna go back to the thick boy and see what this sounds like. There is a lot of clashing tones with these two. <laughs> sounds like a railroad crossing. Okay, we gotta be as thorough as possible. I'm gonna try the two small ones together. I'm trying to figure out what the best technique is. I think, yeah, just swinging them like this way. You know, it makes you think, like, crash cymbals are a pretty common instrument. Also, claves, that's common. You're hitting one clave on another clave. So why is it so socially unacceptable to crash two triangles into each other? I don't get it. All right, one thing I'm about to test uh, with the crash triangles is the roll, right? Because a triangle roll usually goes like this. We gotta in insert this triangle into this triangle. Ho! Oh. Uh, definitely does not sound better than a beater, but it is an interesting sound. All right, wait, I gotta try this. Let's do this triangle here, this one here, and this one at the bottom. Uh, I don't really know where I was going with this. Wait, I think I got it. If I use this clip to clip all three of these together, we can get a triangle roll with all four triangles like this. All right, this is getting kind of stupid, but I, for some reason, I, I really like the sound of these two triangles when I smush them together. I think that's a pretty cool tone. So this would be a good way to see if your band director is actually paying attention to the percussion section. If you got that triangle part, <laughs> do it like this and see if you get screamed at or not. Compose a comment and let me know what other drum experimentations you would like to see. Click this video right here to see me build more wild drum contraptions and have a good morning.